don't like my air box. So what is an airbox? All internal combustion engines, whether it's a car, a boat, an airplane, internal combustion engines need air and fuel along with a spark that ignites in the cylinder that pushes the, the piston and causes the rotation and that just gets repeated back and forth, back and forth. I should mention that Airplane engines have a updraft sump, at least the ones uh, that we're using in this airplane and a lot of the others in the Bearhawks. Uh, updrafts mean that the air is pulled vertically from the bottom through the oil sump and into the engine case. And uh, in, in this particular situation with my engine, I have a forward facing fuel controller. So that meant we had to put an elbow at the bottom of the sump so that the fuel controller would face forward. And uh, that's where the air enters and then goes up in through the sump, up into the engine. So just kind of a crude description of what we're doing with this engine. So before the air enters the engine, it passes through a filter and that filter is stored in a housing or sometimes called an air box. A lot of Bearhawks you'll see have a square type of air induction system like this one. This came with the kit. I did not use it. Uh, again, this is a modification that I'm taking on myself. It's not part of the kit process. So uh, I am going a little bit off track from a, a standard build. So just keep that in mind that this is my own iteration uh, on the air induction system. Uh, I have a ram induction system where I have a three inch inlet on the bottom of my nose bowl. For my original setup, I uh, had a housing that looked like this or an air box that was similar to this. Uh, this would, would hold a conical type of filter and it just simply points forward on the fuel controller and the air enters through here and out the back into the fuel controller. This piece came from James Aircraft and then I modified the back piece here uh, so, so that it would mount to the controller and this was my inlet for the alternate air. So in the event this gets clogged, the, this door would open and you would have dirty air, unfortunately, go into the engine, but at least it's something to keep the engine breathing and producing power. In a minute here, I'm going to show you why I don't like my air box. This air box is just not what I want and I'll show you why. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fabricate a square or actually uh, a rectangular type of an air box that will mount to the front of the fuel controller and then this will be the filter that goes in that air box. It's a K&N type of uh, removable filter. It's washable so this is a reusable filter. This filter has been tested with airflow performance on other modified air boxes. So I know that uh, since my uh, fuel injection system is a airflow performance system, uh, this type of filter has been tested. And so I'm pretty confident in the fact that I'm not going to get any restriction. If anything, this filter is way too big for my engine. So there'll be plenty of air breathing through this. Uh, not much restriction at all. So let's go take a look at my engine and why I don't like my airbox. So I have a punch list of items I need to take care of before I take this out. First thing on the list, air intake. I was never really fond of this connection to begin with, primarily because it doesn't allow any movement between the airbox and the nose bowl. Any movement from this engine is gonna conflict with the bottom cowling and the nose bowl. I've got to do something with this air box. The lower cowling and bottom nose bowl, which is all one piece, are going to have to be removed so that I can get to the air box and go to work on it.
Okay, so here's the completed casting. All the fiberglass has been laid up. The foam's been pulled out of the interior. Made a flange to go around the exterior. Uh, we've got number six nut plates embedded on the female side of this box. So let's take it apart and see how it fits. Nice tight fit. And you can see the filter just drops in there very nicely. Um, there's no play, no slop in the filter. This will be the face of the controller, so this part here will match up to the controller. So I've actually uh, doubled up the fiberglass there just to give that a beefier mount. On the back side, or actually this is, again, this is where the controller is. This is where my alt door will be for alternate air. And I can tell you all right now it's going to be too small, but I guess something's better than nothing. Um, this profile is entirely designed and built uh, for the purpose of fitting all around the fuel controller, the starter, and the alternator at the front of the engine. All of that, let me get this back together, all of that is driven in this design. So it's very, so the controller mounts here, I needed it to point up. This is going to be back behind the alternator. Um, and then this will be the face. Not exactly sure, this, there will be a three inch opening here. I'll use an aluminum flange with some skeet tube. It's got that smooth bore to it. And I'll, when I mount this to the controller, I'll have a better idea of where, exactly where I wanna place that uh, intake here. People are always asking me about what kind of tools I'm using. In this case, for this box and a lot of other small pieces, I really like this uh, body saw. Uh, this is one of these things you can get it uh, from a body shop, supplier, supply house. So for me, this works a lot better than a cutoff wheel, which quite frankly is a little bit more dangerous. And it seems like I have better control uh, using this tool. So we'll go mount this to the front of the engine. I'll use this gasket as a template for where I'm going to put the holes where it'll mount to the controller. And uh, I think when I'm finished, I'm probably, I, I could leave it as is, but I'll probably go over it with a little bit of uh, body filler and give it a paint and just make it look nice. Yeah, so just this morning I was telling a friend of mine that I really feel like all the fabricating I need to do on this project is finally over because I got my airbox done. Well, not really. I went to do a test fit to see how the airbox would fit with the cowling. Really I was going to test fit the uh, cover so I could decide how much so I could decide how much uh, skeet tube I would need to connect into my aluminum tube. And I thought by uh, within an hour, I'll have this whole project wrapped up. Problem is, I can't get my cowling up. And I thought I measured, but I'm, I'm hitting the bottom here. I have bottomed out in this box no wonder nobody else has done this. I thought, why hasn't anybody else done this? Well, now I know why. So I got some thoughts. Um, 
maybe do some surgery on that box Just make it smaller I don't know I don't know I don't know God I was this close to getting this airplane out of here and bringing in the wings now I've I don't know what I'm going to do now. Back to the drawing board.